I'm in Joshua chapter 7. And what you have in chapter 7 is Ai smites Israel and the sin of Achan. It's a rough chapter. But let's read it really quickly. Let's read it. Read the whole thing with me. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, the, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside beth -Aben, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai. And make not all the people to labor tither, for they are all, for they are but few. So there went up tither of the people about three thousand men, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote of them about thirty and six men, for they chased them from before the gate, even unto Shebarim, and smote them in the going down. Wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the eventide. He and the elders of Israel and put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side Jordan. O Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall environ us round and cut off our name from the earth. And what wilt thou do unto thy great name? And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore lest thou thus on upon thy face. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Israel has sinned, and they have also transgress my covenant which i commanded them for they have taken of the accursed thing and have also stolen and dissembled also and they have put it even among their own stuff therefore the children of israel could not stand before their enemies but turn their backs before their enemies because they were accursed neither will i be with you any more, except you destroy the accursed thing from among you up Sanctify the people and say, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, There is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, ye shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord hath, that taketh shall come according to the families thereof. And the family which the Lord shall take shall come by households, and the household which the Lord shall take shall come man by man. And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire, he and all that he hath, because he hath transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he hath wrought folly in Israel. So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken, and he brought the family of Judah, and he took the family of the Zarhites, and he brought the family of the Zarthites, Zarhites, man by man, and Zebdi was taken. And Zebdi was taken. And he brought his household, man by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was taken. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua, and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment, and two thousand shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of fifty shekels of weight, then I coveted them and took them, and behold, they are hid 
in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers and they ran unto the tent and behold, it was hid in his tent and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua and unto all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tent and all that he had. And they brought them into the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger, wherefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor unto this day. So you see, this is a really rough chapter. The sin of Achan. Ai smites them, and they find out it's because of the sin of Achan. And Joshua and Israel, they just had a great victory over Jericho. However, behind the scenes, something happened from within the camp that would be deadly to them. Achan had taken the accursed thing. Joshua 6.17 says, And the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein, to the Lord, only Rahab the harlot shall live. She and all that are with her in her house, in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. You see, the city was accursed and everything in it. And Achan had taken of the accursed thing. You know, there's going to be rough consequences for this sin. And Joshua chapter 7 is one of the most frightening and convicting chapters in the Bible. It shows you the seriousness of sin. It shows you how your sin can have a horrible effect on everybody around you, not just you, but everybody around you. It shows you how sin and not following God's orders will set you back, just like when Israel goes in to attack Ai in chapter 7. Instead of going forward, they just get embarrassed, and it sets them back. Sin brings shame. Sin brings embarrassment and the sin of Achan had set them back they could have destroyed Ai the first try and been further down the road to victory many times we're running in place or we're going backwards and we're wasting time on the road to a victorious Christian life let's use this chapter to first look at the causes of the setbacks and then look at the cures of the setbacks so this is going to be about setbacks, some things that's going to set you back. So what's causes of the setbacks? Well, the first one is committing trespasses. Verse 1 says, But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. So, the, one of the causes is committing trespasses and coveting the things of the world. Look at 19 through 21 real quick. It says, And Joshua said unto Agin, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord, God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment and two hundred shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of fifty shekels of weight, then I coveted them and took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. So coveting the things of the world. The Lord told Joshua in verse 11, Israel has sinned, taken of the accursed thing. They've stolen. 
They've put it among their own stuff. You know, this reminds me of how Christians will take the things of the world that God is, isn't pleased with and put it right among their own stuff, in their own house, their own church, mixing the godly with the ungodly. In verse 21, Achan explains how he went after a goodly Babylonian garment, the silver, the gold. And notice the steps of sin. He saw them, he coveted them, and then he took them. That's what you do. You see something you're not supposed to have, then you start coveting them, you start wanting it, you start really desiring to have it, and then you take them. The key is to turn down the accursed things down here, and then you'll be clothed with a new garment up there. You'll get the silver, you'll get the gold, you'll get the crowns at the judgment seat of Christ. But see, what the, what's the devil doing? Right now, the devil is offering you a quick fix of pleasure that is temporal. He can give you an instant, quick fix pleasure, but it's temporal. But the Lord, he encourages you to suffer now. Then later, you'll get great things that last forever in eternity. So don't covet the things of the world. That's a setback. Don't cover it up. That's a setback. And verse 21 through 23, what did he say? He said, They are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran into the tent, and behold, it was hid in his tent and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua and unto all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. So in verse 22, they got to his tent and the accursed thing, it was in there. It was hid in his tent and the silver under it. In Proverbs 28, 13, it says, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. And if you're not prospering, what are you doing? You're having a setback. You're, you're setting yourself back. Don't think for a second you can hide from your sin, from your adultery, from your wicked thoughts, or any other iniquity. Over in Numbers 32, 23, in Numbers 32 and verse 23, it says, But if you will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out you can only hide it for so long one of these days you'll forget to clear your search history you'll forget to clear your text messages even if you never get caught down here the lord knows every idle word matthew 12 36 every idle word that you speak you're going to give account thereof somewhere so you can't go around just living a lifestyle of committing trespasses, coveting the things of the world, and then covering it up. And number two, calling your own shots. A setback is calling your own shots. Look at this, Joshua 7, verses 2 and 3. It says, And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside beth -Avon on the east side of Israel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. So he sent some guys over to check it out. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai and make not all the people to labor thither for they are but few. So they were calling their own shots. Joshua is Moses' successor, who the Lord is using to call the shots. He is also a type of Jesus Christ who really calls the shots. But instead of Joshua calling the shots in verses 3 through 4, the spies called the shots. The spies told Joshua what to do. There's a reason why they did this. It's because of confidence in the flesh. So the men went up, they viewed Ai, 
And they had the opposite extreme of the spies back there in Numbers 13.33. And this ends badly. You see, back there in Numbers 13.33, they went into spot and they got afraid and they chickened out. Here, they're a little too cocky. They got confidence in the flesh. They won a battle or two. Now they're, they're thinking that they're all that. There should be a balance. You shouldn't have confidence in your flesh. Look at Philippians 3, 3 through 4. Philippians 3, 3 through 4. It says, For we are the circumcision, which worship God in the Spirit, and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. You see, Paul could have, if anybody could trust in their flesh, it would have been Paul, but he didn't even trust in the flesh. Look at 2 Corinthians 3, 5. Over in 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 5, it says, Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. You're not sufficient in yourself. You got to rely on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's like this. You need a balance. You shouldn't have confidence in your flesh, but you shouldn't be afraid of men either. You know your flesh is weak, but within you, you are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Ephesians 6.10. But the men they that went in there to view Ai, they were overconfident in themselves they called the shots. They viewed strength in a certain number of soldiers and not in the Lord. They were focusing on numbers, but in a different way. This mistake of calling the shots and having confidence in the flesh only resulted in cowardly retreating. The 3,000 soldiers of the Lord's army fled before the men of Ai. Look at verse 4. So there went up tither of the people about 3,000 men, and they fled before the men of Ai. The enemy saw their backs. Look at verse 12. It says, Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed. Neither I will be with you any more, except you destroy the accursed thing from among you. The enemy saw their backs. I heard uh, Ruckman mention how Ephesians 6 doesn't have armor for the back. And they were showing the enemy their back. Another great preacher said it was because God will have your back is the reason why Ephesians 6 doesn't have armor for the back. God will have your back, but don't turn your back on the enemy. If you go in the Lord's battles counting on the Lord, the Lord will have your back and the whole armor of God will have your front. You see, there is a time to flee. The Bible talks about fleeing in like 1 Corinthians 6, 18, 1 Corinthians 10, 14, 1 Timothy 6, 11. There's a time to flee, you know, flee from idolatry. Joseph fled from uh, Potiphar's wife, but this wasn't that time. Israel had done enough fleeing. God wasn't with them because of the accursed thing, so they lost their boldness. And sin brings fear. Sin will cause you to lose your confidence. So, you're having setbacks because you're committing trespasses. You are coveting the things of the world, covering, covering it up. You think nobody knows? You're calling your own shots. You're not letting the Lord call the shots. You got confidence in the flesh. And that's why you keep doing that. And then you're just going to end up cowardly retreating. Another setback is consulting with God too late. Look at verse 6 through 10. It says, And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord, until the eventide, he and all the elders of Israel, and put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side Jordan, 
O Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall environ us round and cut off our name from the earth. And what wilt thou do unto thy great name? And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Consulting with God too late. You know, most likely if Joshua had talked to God before the hasty decision that was made in verse 3, he would have known the anger of the Lord had been kindled against Israel, as it says in verse 1. You see, don't you don't want to consult with God too late. You don't want to be crying but not moving. Joshua is so discouraged that he's wishing he stayed on the other side of the Jordan. The sin in the camp has caused him to act completely out of character. Like in verse 7, Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us in the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side, Jordan. See, Joshua's acting completely out of character. That's what sin will do. And we should pray without season, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. But in this case, Israel should have stopped and prayed earlier. They could have had the victory and been going through the spoils. Because of the trespass, the hasty decision of the men who viewed Ai and Joshua's late prayer meeting, no progress had been made. There was a setback. And then, you see, you, you don't want to consult with God too late, calling God into question. You see, he was calling God into question. One sinner destroyeth much good, according to Ecclesiastes 9.18, and it had even had Joshua's mindset in a decline. Joshua had a complete change of heart and attitude. He began to question God, Wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites? You see, sin and lack of fellowship with God through prayer and the scriptures will result in these types of questions. For example, you'll ask God, God, why did you let all these people be born just to go to hell? You'll be saying stuff like that. That shows that You've, you've just been out of fellowship or something. Calling God into question. Consulting with God too late. Crying but not moving. You know, when defeat happens, it's not time to just give up. You need to get moving. Now that's the causes of some setbacks in this chapter. Now here's the cures. The first one, Call all men to sanctification. Look at verse 13. Up, sanctify the people. See, the Lord's telling him to get up. Get up, sanctify the people, and say, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, There isn't a cursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, you shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord taketh shall come according to the families thereof, and the family which the Lord shall take shall come by households, and the household which the Lord shall take shall come man by man. And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire, he and all that he hath, because he hath transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he hath wrought folly in Israel. So Joshua rose up early in the morning. That's what you want to do when you want to get something done. Rise up early in the morning. And brought Israel by their tribes. And the tribe of Judah was taken. And he brought the family of Judah. And he took the family of the Zarites. And he brought the family of the Zarites man by man. And Zabdi was taken. And he brought his household man by man. And Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah was taken. And Joshua said unto Achan, my son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. You see, 
need to call all men to sanctification. They need to consider their own sins. See, in verse 13, they couldn't stand before their enemies with the accursed thing in the midst. He says, There is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. The Lord says, The children of Israel committed a trespass. Even though it was Achan who committed the sin, he still says it was Israel that did it. It affected everything and everybody around him. This should remind you of how 1 Corinthians 12, 26 explains how when one member of the body suffers, all the members suffer with it. We also need to step back, examine ourselves, and see if there's something that could be done on our part to prevent an Achan from rising up or to discourage we need to try to discourage him from his sin. Is there some men in the camp who covered the sin? Some men who maybe didn't discourage Achan. Did, was there some men that, that covered the sin? Was there some men that didn't discourage it? Did they know about it and just didn't do anything to stop it? You see, the Lord has Joshua take families from different tribes and they stand before him man by man to see who has taken the accursed thing. And even though they hadn't committed the trespass themselves, this should remind them to examine themselves. Just like in 2 Corinthians thirteen five, Paul says you should examine yourself. This should remind you to judge yourself now because one day the saints will be brought before Jesus Christ man by man by man to be judged for their service. 1 Corinthians 11.31 So, call all men to sanctification. Consider your own sins and confess them. You see, Achan ended up confessing. And we need to sanctify ourselves. We need to be set apart for the Lord's use. And this would involve a daily confession of sin not for salvation, not to stay saved, but for fellowship and for just a healthy Christian walk. You need to confess your sin like Achan did here. And Achan answered Joshua in verse 20 and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. Joshua knew that it was Achan when he was brought out. Joshua pictures Jesus Christ who trieth the hearts, and he tells Achan to make confession unto him and hide it not from him. In verse 19, if you want a sanctified life that isn't living in perpetual setbacks, then you need to confess and forsake your sin. 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Joshua told, told Achan to give glory to the Lord God of Israel and confess. Now, this is certainly showing that God doesn't get glory from you when you are in unconfessed, hidden sin. Achan's confession is late, but good. He said, indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. You might as well confess because, I mean, he already knows. You might as well just confess. But the men ran and went into Achan's tent. They ran and went. So you need to be hasty to righteousness. When they got there, they got the accursed things and laid them before Joshua and the Lord. They were, they were moving. They were running to get rid of that sin. That's the way you need to be. Be hasty to get rid of it. Be hasty to righteousness. Look at verse 22 and 23. It says in verse 22 and 23 of Joshua 7, So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran unto the tent. And behold, it was hid in his tent, and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent, and brought them unto Joshua, and unto all the children of Israel, and laid them out before the Lord. Quit hiding your sin, confess it, and lay it out before the Lord, just like they did. It says they laid it out before the Lord. Ask God for the victory over this stuff and then fight it until you die. 
you wake up every day and then you fight it again and you wake up tomorrow and then you fight it again so confess this stuff and consider everyone for the labor of the lord you see over in verses three and four It says that they only sent 3,000 men to fight Ai. The men who went to view Ai only wanted to include two or 3,000 in the labor. Not utilizing all the gifts of every saint can hold everybody back. Part of every man being sanctified is participating in the labor. Everybody can do something. If a person is saved, living for the Lord and confessed up, then let him labor. Now, the next thing. Contentment. This is one of the cures. We're on the cures now. The cures is call all men to sanctification. Make sure they consider their own sin. You consider your own sin. You confess them. Now, contentment. Here's a cure. Contentment. Only desire more of God. Look at verse 7. It says, And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side, Jordan. Now that's the wrong kind of contentment because God wanted them over on the other side, Jordan, that they're on now. And then in verse 13, the Lord says, Up, sanctify the people, and say, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, There isn't a cursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. See, that the accursed thing that Achan had taken, it showed he wasn't content. And now look at verse 21. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels of weight, then I coveted them and took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. So you're seeing the wrong types of contentment here. Joshua said, would to God we had been content to dwell on the other side of Jordan. That wouldn't have been a good type of contentment. And then you got Achan here who wasn't content with such things as he had. He wanted more. Joshua said in verse 7, would to God we had been content to dwell on the other side of Jordan. This is the wrong type of contentment. And Achan wasn't content at all. You need to be content and only coveting more of God. So what do you need to do? Cast out all the accursed things. If you're content with such things as you have, then you don't need things that you're, you're not supposed to have. Remember that the Lord said that every tree was pleasant to the sight over there in Genesis 2 and verse 9, yet Eve took of the wrong one. You see, God's blessed you with great things. Be content with that. They had all these other trees. Why did they need the only one that God told them not to have? The Lord said in verse 11, in Joshua 7, he said, Neither will I be with you anymore, except you destroy the accursed thing from among you. See, today the Lord will never cease to be with me. I'm sealed with the Holy Spirit, but I can't expect God to work in my life down here if I desire accursed things instead of God himself. They brought the accursed things to the valley of Achor, which means trouble. And in First Chronicles 2, 7, Achan is called Achar, which means troubler. Don't you realize the accursed things only bring trouble? You think the Christian life is hard? Well, the way of transgressors is also hard. Proverbs thirteen fifteen. You see, Joshua asks Achan, Why hast thou troubled us? And says, The Lord shall trouble thee this day. He says that in verse 25. He's, and Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned them with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. If you stay in your sin, 
that the Lord is going to pull the rug out from under you and uncover what you're hiding beneath it. You need to have some contentment. Only desire more of God. Cast out those accursed things. And the next thing, carry out the culprits. Look at 24 through 26 one more time. Joshua said, And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan the son of Zerah, and the silver, and the garment, and the wedge of gold, and his sons, and his daughters, and his oxen, and his asses, and his sheep, and his tent, and all that he had him, and they brought them unto the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones, and burned them with fire, after they had stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger, wherefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor unto this day. So they carried out the culprits. Achan had to be taken out, stoned, and burned. His family had to be stoned because the accursed thing was in his tent. They most likely would have been covering for him. They had their part in it, most likely. Churches will go along with sin and the people or even the pastor because they love numbers. They can't be content with God, the things of God and his wants, so their covetousness and discontentment will cause them to accept men who are over much wicked. They'll just accept them simply so they can have the numbers and the large offerings. And they can, you know, he had to be taken out to the world or worldly thinking Christians. This may seem cruel, but also remember, Achan and his family caused the death of 36 men. And we're just going to cause the death of more men. So to save some, they had to take out some. You see, when someone is committing a gross sin in the church, you have to stop fellowship with that person. You know, Paul talks about put away from among yourselves that wicked person. He's going to bring everybody down. Continuing to allow this person in your fellowship can cause the decline the death, the downfall, complete devastation to other saints. The sin of one man always affects people around him. Achan's family suffered. Verse 24. His animals suffered. Joshua and Israel suffered and was made discouraged all because of the sin of one man. You also have to remember that the word of your sin and defeat spreads to the lost world. And that's why Joshua said, the Canaanites and the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it in verse 9. Joshua eventually said a key thing at the end of his prayer. In verse 9 he says, What wilt thou do unto thy great name? He says that to the Lord. If you pray that going into a battle, it shows the right heart motive. It shows that Joshua is concerned about the name of the Lord being praised or being blasphemed. And after Joshua said that phrase, the, Lord's be the Lord begins to tell him what to do. You know, we could all be further on down the road if we didn't let the world allure us through the lust of the flesh, through sin. You know, while it's pleasurable, it will only bring death. Imagine life as a road. Along this road, you have the flesh, the world, and the devil, with little food stands and stores and attractions and sideshows all the way down through there. They're all distractions for you to pull off the road of victory. Each time you pull off the road, you got a setback. But the things of God, on the other hand, are all in front of me. I don't have to pull off the road for these things. He tells me I need to press toward the mark for the prize. We need to be living in light of the rapture. We need to be living in light of the judgment seat of Christ that are out before us. Maybe you're in a setback right now. Pull out of the devil's parking lot. Get back on the road. Confess your sin. Get back in the Bible. Get back listening to preaching. Get back into your ministry. The Lord may give you a supercharge and put you right back to where you would have been. But these are setbacks. You got some causes. 
but then you got some cures.